is a Furnished Brothers production. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Talkin' Buds podcast. The Talkin' Buds podcast. About the buds, by the buds, for the buds. This is the Talking Buds podcast. And now, here's your host, Rob and Ryan. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode 47 of the Talking Buds podcast. Whew. The, this is the the injury episode, Ryan. The emergency call up from the Marlies episode. The all hands on deck episode. What do you think? What do you think we should call this one? Number 47, the Pierre Good Guy Angval episode. Oh, that was random. I didn't think that you'd say that. Or the Leo Komarov episode. The Leo Komarov episode. Yeah, 47. Oh, oh yes, yes. Yeah. Um, now you get it. What about the... Yeah, I did. I was like, what? All right there, bud. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. A little slow um, on that one. Yeah, there, buddy. yeah. That one went way over my head. Yeah. All right. Good start. Because I was boys. trying. Well, I was trying to go with like the fact that every defenseman is hurt, apparently, except for Tyson Berry and Cody CC. Yeah. And Travis Dermott. Yeah, they're they're thin. They're thin. They showed the pairings before the game. Yeah. The, like, tonight's. Ooh. So tonight's defense pairings heading into the game against the New Jersey Devils were Marinson and Barry, Dermot and Hull, Sandin and CeCe. Yikes. Yeah, and, 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 and Dermot and Hull saw most of the ice time tonight. That's for sure. Yeah, but you look um, at that, you look at that, and like you almost forget like, they, they go on kind of a three-game losing streak, which I'm sure we'll get to at some point. But then you look at those D pairings, and you're like, eh, it's kind of tough to to consistently win hockey games and play good defense if you're that thin on the back. Marty Marinson. Yeah, like getting, getting key like... Key times. Yeah, like, like key yeah. times in hockey games. Like, that's Marty that's Marinson's ice time tonight recipe. was 17-10. Yeah, and like I don't want to pile on the guy. Like I feel bad. Like he's an easy whipping boy, and like it's it's not really fair because the guy's just out there doing his best. But like just if if he's relied upon as being a top four guy who's supposed to shut down other players, like I, I'm not that confident in no. him doing that. That's just the position they're in right now. Yeah, yeah. Like there's nothing you can do about it. No. It's just sometimes like you forget, like because. Man, if you if you look, they got they got the big win tonight, and they need the points, so you'll take them as you can get them. But it, it's it's pretty clear that Sheldon Keefe has like unlo- unlocked the offense. Yes. But if you even look at the stretch of games that they won in the past, like the past like twelve games or so, like they're giving up three plus goals like more than half the time. Like they're still allowing a ton of goals. It's just the unlocked offense that have that has kept this team winning hockey games and back in a playoff picture. Would you attribute some of that to Freddie Anderson's play? Like he, like tonight's game against New Jersey, for instance, like, again, I did not think Freddie Anderson was that great. Like you, you just, you played a a crappy devil's team and uh, he's, he's October. Yeah. He hasn't looked, yeah. He hasn't looked great. Like, Yeah. yeah, there's, there's no doubt. And tonight it's like, so it's the perfect night. They come out and score a bunch of goals and you're kind of looking at his stats and his save percentage. is just dropping his goals against average is dropping, which is why he's never in the Vesna conversation. And tonight it's just like a gimme, like one goal against night. And then you end up giving up four, four. Yeah. at the end of it. Yeah. And it's like, ah, like that, that's, that's tough. Like, yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll take the two points. It's not that bad, but if, if for him and his confidence, like 
you're still giving up four against a pretty bad hockey team. Like, luckily, you can score your way out of it. But I, I was not thrilled with the four. Like, that shouldn't happen. No. Well, they they kind of just packed it in there with ten minutes left in the third. In my yeah. Opinion. Well, it's like yeah, you can like you can nitpick. Like they still they kind of they still dominated that hockey game for the most part. But for Freddie, it's like just sucks. Like the guy just can't buy a shutout or or a low low scoring game. Like he just always takes the biggest hit on his save percentage. So where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the defensive call ups for tonight, or do you want to start with Sunday night's uh, debacle and the Riley injury? Yeah, I want to start with this first. Oh, okay, there you go. PBR. I'm still battling the uh, the cold, so I'm 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 staying off the beers for tonight. That's really I, disappointing I, to hear. Well, I gotta shake this, man. This has been like a week of this. Normally, like I don't get sick ever, and this is just like taking it out of me. Well, good rest. That is the cure. Yeah, a lot of rest. Getting a good sleep. Yeah, good sleepies. All right, so let's talk. Let's talk Sunday night. So, they were awful on Sunday night in Florida. I don't think we need to like review the game exactly, but it was no. just, it was it was like not ready to play. No, no, and they, sitting they, in the sun for yes. too long. Yes, yes. How can he not go to Florida and have some time off and not just getting a little bit of trouble? Yeah, I know. It's, I know, dude. Every time that you they go to that building, no matter who's the coach or who the players are on this team. They always suck in that building. Yeah, they're just like I, I was not play. surprised in the slightest. Yeah, terrible so, effort. So effort. like as as uh, as I said on Instagram, that was like a burn the tape game in my opinion. But then on Monday we find out that Morgan Riley has a broken foot and he's out minimum eight weeks. Ryan, yeah, that's like, tough. minimum. Like that's that's. Like, you combine that with Muzzin's injury, and CJ said tonight that Muzzin could be back on skates as early as tomorrow, and the Leafs are the Leafs are coming up on their bye week. What do you think What do you think of the bye week? I think about all the games they've had in hand on teams all season. Yeah. And it's like, it's time for other teams to catch up. I'm tired of looking at the standings being like, oh, well, the Leafs have uh, 54 points, but this team has two games in hand, this team has three games. It's like... It's time for the rest of the league to catch up and know where you're really at with yeah, games I, played against other teams in your division. I just think that, like, if you're a player, you're probably just pumped about the bye week. Coming oh, up. yeah. Yeah, like, how stoked are you? Vacation. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. So, like, so like if you're the Leafs, like, so Muzzin apparently is going to be back on skates as early as tomorrow. So, like... They just got to get through Thursday night against Calgary and then Saturday night against the Blackhawks. And then they don't play again until the 27th in Nashville. That's that's nine days off. Yeah. Eight days off. It's like with the all-star break too. Yeah, with the all-star break. So like Matthews and Marner and Freddie got to go do the all-star thing, but whatever. Yeah, I man, I think you know what? I think I think for Morgan Riley, like eight weeks, that's a long time. I wish that injury wasn't so long, but we've mentioned it many times that he's not having his best season. So I wish it was for shorter time, but I think maybe getting this guy a, a fresh start coming back at a critical time in the season, like it, it could be a good thing for him, but hopefully they can hold on to that spot while he's gone. But I I but we get to see Sandine play like good minutes. Like that that's all we're like asking for. Yeah. Like so it's, it's it's nice to see some guys fill in if for, if for injuries like this to see where we're at with the expiring contracts coming next season. It's like, okay, let's get these guys up. Let's see what we got cuz we're going to have to recycle these guys who are constantly leaving cuz we can't pay them. So let's see what we got coming next. Well, just before we move on to Sandin, because we're going to talk a lot about him, but like, so that, like, if you look at the the schedule, that puts Riley in and returning in and around like middle of March. And so on the 10th, they've got Tampa and on the 14th, they've got the Bruins. So it's like, if you, if you could get them back in and around there, that would be ideal. Yeah. Like let's, let's, 
they've caught up to the wild card teams. They're still ahead of Florida. Like they just got to keep playing the way they've like, they just got to keep scoring realistically. Yeah. If you look at all the games they've played, yeah. like if they, they just got to score, if they score, they win. Yeah. Like I think that's what's obvious statement of all time, but pertaining to this team, like they're, they're not going to grind out a two one win. Like it's pretty clear how this team wins hockey games. Yeah. All right. You brought him up earlier. So, the uh, the big news, at least in my opinion, is the promotion of Rasmus Sandin. So, I thought he played really well tonight. He had two assists. He had about 16 minutes of ice time. I I don't want to say like, because you always say the um, it's a good thing when you don't notice a defenseman on the ice. And it's like, obviously you notice him because I try and watch him every time he's out there. But like, you don't notice him in the sense that, like, doesn't turn the puck over. Doesn't make stupid, boneheaded plays. Like, is really poised when he's out there. Yeah, I, I just like how much time he he's willing to give himself in his own end. Like, sometimes when you're watching, you get a little frustrated. They're, they're, they're backing up in their own end. It's just, like, attack. But for him, you could just really see how he has the ability and the intelligence to, like, slow the game completely down even when he's backing into his own end, looking to make a pass. Like that's the main thing I noticed from him tonight. And just him walking the line at the point, getting an open look and just taking a nice wrist shot. Like that, that's beauty. Like that's how, that's how you create offense from the point, unless you have a OV clapper, but he doesn't. So he figured out a way. And when you walk that line and get open and do like that, that was a big league play. Another massive topic of discussion when it comes to Sandin is potentially burning a year of his ELC. And I I don't know. Like, I'm of two minds on this. It's like, on the one hand, yes, this team, we've everyone talks about the team's salary cap and the issues they're going to have down the road, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm so sick of talking about this team's salary cap, which is why I'm sort of leaning in the other direction, which Justin Bourne made a great... Um, point today on the radio about this. It's like, just stop worrying about that kind of stuff. Like this team, like this is an important season for this team. There's expectations this season, like making the playoffs and potentially like going a round or two or three in. And the NHL is such a parody driven league that if you get in, you saw last year in the playoffs with all the upsets that it is entirely possible. So let's, let's focus on this year and worry about like, that that argument just always falls so flat to me is it's like well we're gonna burn a year of his elc and it's like so, so like aren't we trying to win a stanley cup now yeah that, that, that's what the, like you just hit the nail right on the head it's like this isn't three years ago where we had no idea what marner and matthews and nylander were going to be yeah like this is put up or shut up time in and this dude is already 30. better. This dude is already better, in my opinion, than CeCe, Marincin, um, and Tyson Berry. <laughs> I can't stand Tyson Berry. I love how much you hate Berry. I can't stand oh Tyson Berry. And I, I, I just love the people who just like are like, well, you know, and Berry's contract's going to be up at the end of the season. It's like, good, bye. Like, you're, you're horrible. Yeah, I, he's just Jake Gardner, like whatever. But I, you can't worry about burning a year at this point. No. It's like whatever is best for this hockey team, that's what we need to be doing yes. this year. Yes. The stakes are too high now. Yes. This isn't the development years. No. It's over. No. This so is the get win him in years. There. Get him in there. And it's like if I if I was running things, I'd be like, hey, uh, Cody Cece. Thanks. You're going to be sitting in the press box as a healthy scratch when like our roster is at full strength. That's where you're sitting. I don't think they're going to do that. But like like I said, based on what I've seen, this kid should should not go down. If if we're going based on that logic where it's like we're trying to win, we're all in on this season, he should not be going back down to the Marlies. Period. Well, I I like to see him like play some decent minutes against some better hockey teams. Like that's for sure. Like I'm not going to just say he's an absolute stud off the bat. Like 
does Ryan, he have it's way not about more him raw being potential? An, it's not than... about him being a stud. It's about him already being a better defenseman than the three guys I just listed. Yeah. So it's like he's I can already tell you that when they play the Boston Bruins, he will have a better game than Dermot, Marincin, and CeCe. Well, you know what factors in or not Dermot, uh, Tyson Berry, excuse me. You, you know what factors into all this for me is he started the season here and he, he didn't get the fair shake. But if you're going to give this guy his opportunity with some injuries to prove that he can knock a guy like CC out of the lineup when they're finally all healthy, is I trust Sheldon Keefe to do the right thing yep. by this guy. Yep. Like he's going to put him in the right opportunities and give him the best chance to prove the prospect that he is. And that's why I feel way better about him coming up right now than I did at the start of the season. The confidence in the coach doing the right thing for me is there. Yeah. I just think that, you know, they've got the so much CC's got that cap hit and it's just like they haven't taken him out of the lineup very much, if at all, this season. So it's like, I just don't see them doing it. I would do it in a heartbeat. But I Rob, just don't I think see them I think this it. I think Kyle Dubas and Sheldon Keefe, when playoff time rolls around, there's it's not going to be Mike Babcock loyalty. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be like that. They're gonna, they're going to put the team out there that they want to put out there. It's not going to be by loyalty. I can almost guarantee it. Well, I I tend to lean in that direction as well, and I hope that is in fact the case, because yeah, it's you you just have to like you. I don't know what else to say. Like, I'm trying to come up with, like, some big soliloquy for it. And it's like, honestly, like, just put the best players out there. I don't care who's making what, especially when it comes to the blue line. Like, just put the six best defensemen you have out there every night. Well, are you talking to the coach in that instance? Or are you talking to the GM? Both are of Are you them. talking to the fan base? Both. Uh, everyone who within who cares and is a part of the equation. That's who I'm talking to. Cause I think for the fan base, like I don't think anybody would be opposed to Cody CC being in the press box. No, no and their number yeah. one prospect is playing good minutes with the, with the big club. Yeah. I, I think uh, the fan base is on board with that. Yeah. I think the fan base is pretty on board with that too. Uh, anyway, I thought he, I thought he played really well tonight. They, um, the New Jersey Devils suck. Like, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Almost softer than the Leafs are. Oh, yeah. No, they're they're pretty terrible. Like, could you imagine being, like, P.K. Subban and you just, like, you just get dummied night in and night out? And it's like, you just they just fired Ray I think he's Shiro over it at this day. point. It's like, they're... Yeah. They're and his cap hit is so high. Right now. Yeah, his cap hit is so high where it's like if they're going to trade him, everyone's going to be like, yeah, okay, cool, but you're going to pay at least half of that. Yeah, and they, they got the two first overall picks, and they're just not that hyped up so far. I don't even hear about them half the time. No, I don't hear about them half the time either. Like Jack, Jack Hughes, didn't he? did he come back? He left the game tonight. I think he came back. I was more focused on Blake Coleman. Oh, you Blake Coleman, three of the four Patrick. goals. That a boy. It's a stud. Yeah. Greg Millen just going Greg on Greg Millen and on. was just, you know, yeah. like we don't hear much about him. Yeah. But he's a he's a hell of a player. What about Greg Millen calling the arena Scotiabank Place? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's not like Calgary or Vancouver. <laughs> Isn't no there a Scotiabank place in the West Coast. No, the uh, Calgary is Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Yeah. Edmonton is Rogers Place. There's no Scotiabank, Scotiabank Place. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm getting it mixed up with someone else. Yeah, he he said tonight that Austin Matthews was looking for his first hat trick at the Scotiabank Place. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's not great. Uh, no, it's not great at all. No, no. <sighs> anyway, so we got Calgary coming up on Thursday. What do you think of this whole Kachuk Cassian thing? I, I'm split down the middle. Yeah. 
Like, I, I, I would love for Matthew Kachuk to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. Like, if they just added him to this lineup, they would be a Stanley Cup contender. Like, that's the type of player they need. But when you, but we all know what he's about. And when you're willing to do what he does on the ice, like, you're going to run into a Zach Cassian who punches your face in. And that's yes. exactly what happened. Yes. And just, just to interrupt, Jack Hughes did not come back. He was feeling ill. If anyone wants to chirp us for not paying attention to that, sorry, I don't pay attention to what's going on with the New Jersey Devils. I kind of just pay attention to all the blue jerseys that are on the ice and what they're doing. So if you want to chirp us for that, I don't really care. Honestly, um, I was taking a peek at the the celeb, uh, Jeopardy Goat Edition too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, um, I did switch to that once or twice. I'm not gonna lie. Kenny Jennings. Yeah, at a boy. Yeah. Daily doubles. Yeah. Oh yeah. Went perfect on them. Yeah, guys, guys, unbelievable. Yeah. Goat. Oh um, my, I, I loved that program. Oh man, that was great. <sighs> Anyways, I agree with you with Zach Cassian, and I just think that it's like. On the one hand, it's like it's like the guy's a pest, and you like to see him get get what he deserves. Even though I kind of like the way Kachuk, I, I would love it if the Leafs had a guy like him. Oh my, man, I, I, would, I would love die it. Die for him to be at a Maple the same Leaf. time. It's like, yeah, at the same time, you can't just tee off on a guy's head like that. So, two games, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, but, but it, it's. When when you when someone's being an agitator, someone deep down wants to see someone do that to to a Brad Marchand type, and Cassian just went out and did it. Yep. And what about Brad Marchand? Miss it. We're doing a little around the league session tonight. We're just kind of the conversation's just kind of taking us there. What about Brad Marchand missing the uh, the shootout attempt a lot, just skating right by the puck and costing the Bruins the game? It's a little embarrassing, but like the guys on one of the best lines in hockey. He's in one of the best teams in hockey. I, I think he's going to be okay. His, his, I don't Twitter think he really comeback. cares what, uh, Mark from Keswick says. Yeah, his about. Twitter comeback calling that guy a peasant was pretty hilarious. That made me laugh out loud. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't really think, uh, he cares what Ryan from Newmarket has to say about his shootout attempt. No, I think I he's know. just doing just fine. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think he cares that much either. I got to agree with you on that. All right, let's uh, let's move into bums and beauties. It's time to find out who's a bum and who's a beauty. Take it away, buds. That's right. Who's a bum? Who's a beauty for this week? Ryan, I went first last week. I'm going to let you go first this week. All right. Beauty of the week, Austin Matthews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have to do it because been hard on him throughout the year. And tonight, when you score three meaningless goals, it's okay. Because I'm sure if you've looked at OV seasons that where he's had 50... 60 40 he's had a ton of meaningless goals so if you want that chase to 50 if you want to be that top goal scorer who's a a threat for 50 every year you're gonna need a meaningless hat trick every once in a while and playing with a guy like Mitch Marner who's probably his favorite thing in the world is setting you up for goals like this is a recipe for for a Maple Leaf to get to 50 for the first time in a long time. And it's very enjoyable to watch. And it's fun when he is scoring this many goals. Like, the guy is an even-strength goal machine. Which, I forget about that stat sometimes, but every time they remind me of it, it just impresses me more and more every time. I so, to, Austin Matthews is my beauty of the week. I'd like to just chime in here and just, once again... uh swipe back at the haters um chris johnson had an article after last week's after we did last week's episode cj had an article on sportsnet.ca that said austin matthews has played his way back into the heart trophy conversation oh and what happened at the same time ryan uh the leafs are back in a playoff position 
and are fighting for home ice in the first round. There was a guy on this certain Maple Leaf podcast weeks ago who said, if the Leafs are going to get their make their way back into a playoff position, Austin Matthews needs to be in the Hart Trophy conversation. And for uh, weeks after, hey, you chirping Austin Matthews. You shut up and stop chirping Austin Matthews. It's like, oh, really? Interesting. Really interesting. That's all. I just I just wanted to add that little nugget in there. Yeah, it's not a coincidence where this team is in the standings and how he's playing. But we, but we chirped. I, I chirped them for no good reason. Anyways, moving on. My beauty of the week is Mitch Marner for setting up Austin Matthews to score his goals tonight. And just like, so unselfish. He loves passing. Oh, I love like, like, it. Like, like that second Matthews goal in particular, it's like he could have wired that top shelf. He had half the net available to him, and he was like, no, nah, here you go. Here you go, Austin. You take it. Yeah, yeah, literally. Guy literally loves passing the puck. Yeah, he loves passing. His favorite thing to yeah, do his favorite on thing planet to do. Earth. If there was a way for him to pass in the shootout, he would do it. He'd pass on a breakaway. He, yeah. He literally did pass on a mini breakaway. Yeah. Like the one he set up Matthews for the one timer. Yeah. His second one. Yeah. Like th- that that, was, that's, that's the one I was dude, just talking he, he about. He literally had an open lane to the net. Yeah, like had a whole net to shoot at. Yeah. That's the one I was just talking about. He had a, he had, like, he could have just roofed it over top of, uh, what's his name? Corey Schneider. But he was like, nope, here you go, Austin. You take this one. I'm not listening, am I? No, you're not listening. You literally just didn't listen to what I, I said. I literally just did not listen to yeah, what you, you did just not, said. Yeah, you did not. You did not. I literally listen. just tuned out yeah. completely. Like, I literally was just like, he had a whole net to shoot at. And then a minute later, you're like, he had a whole net to shoot at. Yeah, that was, that was awful. Yeah. <laughs> just tuned out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You just That's tuned my out. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Yikes. Not listening. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're just too busy thinking about the Scotiabank plates. <laughs> oh my god, just no. not listening. Nope, that's not. okay. Yep, yeah, that's okay. I agreed with you. Know we were thinking the same thing. Yeah, I know. That that's one I thing know. that is clear about that. Oh my god. Uh, oh man. All right, bum man. of the week. I do you want to just go uh, unanimous on this? Yeah. You 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 said. Fred Anderson. Yeah. 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 I think it, I think it's fair to go unanimous on this. Like, as I've said before, he's a streaky goalie. Like, if you've watched him, you know you know that by now. Yeah. Like, he's going to have stretches where he's unbelievable. He's going to have stretches where he's terrible. But at the end of the day, he does face a lot of high danger shots every night, but has not looked himself. So, I think it's pretty unanimous for this one. Yeah, and so um, nothing, nothing for me to add to that. I think you hit everything completely on the head. Um, he he just like man, like, like the, it's com- gonna prevent him from ever get getting into that Vesna conversation, like you said earlier. Like until he he can like decrease the amount, uh, like how streaky his seasons are. It's it's gonna prevent him from getting to that Vesna level. It's just the way it is. Yeah, it happens all the time. And and a part of that is like you win a Vesna by playing on a very good defensive team or unless you had an unbelievable year where you just stun your head. But it, it's it it kills me because I every game it's like, hey, this is a shutout candidate. And then somehow he just lets three in. Like late in a game, and you're like, that's just killer. Like you're never gonna win anything individually when you're giving up three goals against the New Jersey Devils are four goals. So, as I said earlier, they got Calgary on Thursday, Chicago on Saturday, and then it's their bye week. We will still be doing a show next week. We'll be doing our mid-season report cards. Ryan, just like the rest of the Talking Buds listeners, just is finding out about this for the first time. That So, Ryan, you've got some homework to do next week. Go down the roster and give everyone a letter grade 
a letter for the first grade. half of the season. Yeah. Oh yeah. I want a letter grade. That's gonna be a tough one. Because yep. the first half was atrocious. Yep. Well, that's but, it's gonna factor into the to the letter grade. Yeah, it better. Yeah. It has to. Yeah. You gotta be you fair. You can't have recency bias. It's gotta no. be from the start of the season till the all star break. Letter grades for everyone currently on the active roster. And like including guys like even though Riley and Muzzin technically are on IR, they'll still get letter grades too. This point of the season is like seriously the NHL lull. Oh yeah, like, like even tonight, like, like man, like dude, if even this, trying like, to do the the show tonight, it's like okay, we're gonna like the main thing going on with the team is they have defensive injuries and they've they've called up. Uh, Sandin and they've called up Lilligren. Lilligren didn't play, so we can't really talk about him yet. And so we talk about Sandin for a bit. And then after that, it's like, and yeah, they kicked the crap out of a uh, garbage New Jersey Devils team. And everyone's just kind of in a lull. <laughs> right? It's like. <laughs> Including us. Yeah, we're in a lull too, man. It's like, it, it, it totally does. Like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Like, am I sitting down for tonight's game against the crap New Jersey Devils, like, absolutely fired up out of my mind? It's like, no. You know when you end a sentence with, uh, and yeah. Yeah, like, it's true, though. <laughs> it's true. It's like, am I sitting down tonight stoked? Like, am I going to sit down on Thursday night against Calgary? It's like, yeah, because Calgary's a much better team, and the last time they played Calgary, they had that epic collapse, and, and that's an interesting game. But it's like, the Devils are awful. And it's like a Tuesday night game at the Scotiabank place. And like, I'm just, it's like, I, I'm, I'm K okay. and it's like, yeah, we're heading into the yeah. all-star break. And it's like all the players too are just so stoked to get out on the bye week. And it's like, and we're going into the all-star game and it's like, oh my God. Do you know one person who cares about the all-star game? Mm, no. Anyone uh, over the age of like 16? No. Are you excited for the new event this year where they're going to shoot pucks out of the stands? <laughs> like, like what, what is the that? hell is that? I know. I know. That's awful. No, but listen, on the one hand, it's like, I get what they're trying to do. It's like, they're trying to make it because the, the most fun part is the skills competition. Like nobody cares about the actual game. So it's like, if people are going to watch, they're going to watch the skills competition. And they're trying to make it more fun. And like, so I get that. But on the other hand, it's like, what? The all-star game is the fastest skater competition and the hardest shot. Yeah. Everything yeah. else is just, no, nah. no, no good. No, not excited. No, mm -hmm. the, probably won't watch. No, I'm not. Yeah. Unless you're bored out of your mind. Yeah. And well, that's no, the only no, thing on television. There's no football. No. No, there's no football, so we're going to be watching that. Well, it's just, you get on tonight, and it's like, could, could we go could we go on a rant about their losses to uh, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Florida? Like, could could we rant about that? Yes. But at the end of the day, like, we're, we're, we're going to give our, what I just found out, our mid-season report cards. Yeah. And that includes just an overall team grade. And you could just, what this season has taught me is at the end of the day, you're going to end up where you end up, no matter how high the highs are or how low the lows are. Like if you, if you told me that this was going to be the record at the all-star break at the start of the season, I'd have been like, yeah. Yeah. 25, 16 Seems and good. six. They're third, third behind in, the yeah. Bruins and the lightning. Yeah. The, the Panthers are kind of close. Yeah. Like, if you told me that, I'd be like, yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. And it's just been the absolute ups and down. This has been the most up and down season. Yep. Well, and it's like, sure, like like I said earlier, it's like the, the game on Sunday night against the Panthers was horrendous. But it's like, what, what, what we're going to come on here after they just beat up on the Devils and be like, oh, my God, and they were awful. And what did um, Cody Cece is just an albatross out there. Yeah. Or, or, or we like, come no. out and we, yeah. Or we come out and do the opposite where we just be like, Oh, they dummied them tonight. Look, I'm yeah. real. Yeah. I know. It's like, it's no. like, 
It's like, yeah, no, this team has to score a lot of goals to win hockey games, and they're going to give up a lot of goals. Yeah. Like that, that's what we know, and that's how it is. And we're at the point in the season where it's like, you're you're only going to get, unless they go on some sort of like epic collapse or another epic run, like they're going to get in the ebb, ebb and flow, right? So it's going to be like win a couple games, lose a couple games, and you'll get fired up for games that matter in the standings. So games against Florida, Tampa, Boston, or any of the other like Eastern Conference teams that are so like the Islanders, the Capitals, the Penguins, like those games you'll be like sitting down. But like, like I said, like a Tuesday night game against New Jersey, it's like, eh, they should win this. Yeah. Like, and I'm happy they did. Yeah. But like, like, I'm happy they did lay a like lay a beating on the most of the game. There, and there's gonna be the the people who, like you said, are like you said, who aren't stoked that they gave up four. But it's like, dude, th- that's what this team is. Like, they they're not good defensively, and the fact that they have all these injuries isn't helping. And Freddie slumping isn't helping. Like they got seven goals, seven four. That's the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, seven four. Yeah, like that's hockey. Yeah, that's how they win. That's how they want. We've said that like, oh my God. We said that all last year. We've said it at the beginning of this year with Babcock. And it's just like the team is built to win 7-4. And guess what? They won 7-4. So if we're going to sit around and be like, oh, they gave up four in the in the third period. It's like, yeah, they packed it in. Like, hey, we're done. We just whooped this team's ass for two and a half periods. So, Cool. Yeah, it's just this season. See you, the, see you Thursday at the Scotiabank place. <laughs> this season's just been like a, a learning lesson for me. Like, I usually try to listen back to our podcast just, just to catch if I sound like a complete idiot and if I'm not listening, which clearly isn't working. Oh, yeah, you, you yeah, I flat whew. out weren't listening tonight. <laughs> But like it, dude. Like we've gone off on this podcast this year, like off. Like last year, we were a little more optimistic for for those of you who were with us last season, or have um, missed those episodes. We 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 tried to spin more positivity this year. It just listening back to some of them, like we were just blasting them, and then they just we take a two week break and they go on an absolute run, and then you come back and you're like. Man, was I just overreacting this entire time? Or are we just reacting to the events that are the most current? Like that I think, it's I think I think I don't think we were overreacting. I think I think they were bad for the first few months of the season. And I think the coaching change like you said it perfectly earlier. Sheldon Keefe has unlocked the offense. So it's like they're playing the way they should have been playing all along. And it just took having him behind the bench to pull the right strings to allow them to play the way they're capable of playing offensively. Defensively, there's still all kinds of issues. But as we just said, they're built this way. So now they're playing the way they're supposed to be playing and they're winning more than they're losing. Whereas like earlier in the season, we're having all these dramatic overreactions because it's like they're not really scoring. They're terrible defensively. They're getting outworked by teams that on paper and in the standings are beneath them. And so it's 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 frustrating to watch. You have who, in my opinion, is now the officially the one of, if not the most overrated coach in NHL history, refusing to change the lines for no good reason. And so it's like, it, it beats you down, man. And yeah, now like they're just in a place still not like, over it. No, we're still like not. We're right, still talking every time, about it. Every time I watch Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews play together, I just shake my head. Like you saw like the two goals that Marner set Matthews up for tonight. That would have never happened before because they weren't allowed to play together because they just weren't for no good reason. Because you are a stubborn idiot. That's why. Yeah, like (laughs) it's funny. Like, like. We're still not over it to a point. No, you know? I'm scarred forever from that. Yeah, man. it's like you almost think back. It's like was that was a waste. 
Yeah, it, yeah. Like those, it was those such years a waste. were a bit of a waste to well, me. Well, no, like, you no, know, like not, no, not totally. But no, I can't believe I can't believe we're talking about this again. I think, I think, him coming in and fixing the culture was really important. And I think that first year where they went to the playoffs against the Capitals was really important. And then the second year against the Bruins, it was like fine. But last year, all of last year. And this, the first three and a half months or whatever, this year was a complete, this season in particular was a complete waste. Just having him there. Complete waste. Like he, he was a detriment to them last season and into this season. Watching Sheldon Keefe, as you put it, unlock the offense is just proof that like, even tonight, like, Freddy the Goat sco- scores that goal tonight, and he goes over and pats him on the back, and big smiles, everyone's enjoying themselves. It's like, you never saw that with... No, never. Babs. Never. I noticed no. that, too. I noticed that exact moment, too. It's like that... You didn't see that, you know? No. Yeah, like, it just... It's amazing how we just always bring this guy up. Like, it's kind of well, weird. Well, you're right, because we're... Well, it's, it's hard, dude. We're, it's hard not to. No, like, because it's been such a massive difference. Yeah. But like it's just back to my original point of like overreacting. I think it's just the the trolls who just use the hindsight on you. Like, oh well, you shouldn't you shouldn't get too like uh, upset when they're playing bad because you know they're a good team and they're going to. But it's like, dude, like when you watch the game, like you're doing a day, we're doing a weekly podcast here. Like we're we're gonna call it like we see it how they're playing, yes. and it's and I I guess I don't. I'm trying. I guess I'm trying to like counsel myself right now if i feel bad about chirping them or or not and i guess now i i realize i I, i'm not because we're just calling it like we see it like they they were atrocious no and and listen we're we're fans that's part of being a fan is going on that emotional roller coaster ride and it's like we've made no bones about it from day one of the talking buds podcast that this is a leaf fans podcast like if you if you want hard hitting analysis this isn't the show for you if you just want to feel like you're talking hockey with your buds the talking buds this is the show for you and that's the type of stuff you're gonna get on this show is we're along for the ride and when they stink we get fired up about it and then when they play well like tonight we come on here and we're like kind of like yeah good we feel good they should beat up on that crappy team let's Head towards the playoffs. Let's barrel towards the playoffs. Let's, who cares about burning a, a year on Sandin's entry level? Let's just play him. He's one of the better defensemen they have. Yeah, I, honestly, you, you couldn't have put it any better than that. Like, it's it just, I, I hate having my ego busted a bit. We are just like, I'm sitting here and be like, they're not going to make the playoffs. And then all of a sudden, it's like, Ah, they're probably going to make the playoffs. <laughs> well, they didn't, just, they didn't look like a team that was going to make the playoffs earlier. I know, I know. I just, it, 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 I'm butthurt over it, though, sometimes. It's like, man, maybe I shouldn't have gone off like that. Like, it, it, it's a crazy what Leaf fans, because, like, we're just crazy Leaf fans, right? Like, like mm-hmm. we could sit here and pretend to, like, like you said, like, we're not analysts, but sometimes we can sit here and analyze. But at the end of the day, we're just crazy Leaf fans. Yep. And and it's just, it's so hard to just, like, everything we've been through with this team, through all the years of frustration and, and people you talk to who've, who've, like, given up on this team because they're just so tired of the disappointment and, like, not winning. Like, they didn't win a playoff round that entire decade. Nope. Like, think about that. Yeah, I know. That's I know. awful. Like, you know, so it's it's like, excuse me for overreacting when this team sucks. Yeah. Because it sucks. Like, yeah. hearing that, it's like, that's awful. Like, that's yeah. no good. Like, yeah. I'm going to get upset when yeah. they're not playing well. I, I yeah. know hindsight, whatever. Who cares? Like, yeah. I, I, we're frustrated and we want a winner. Yeah. And you notice how, like, so they go out and they stink on Sunday night in Florida. and But we come on here tonight and we're like, yeah, you know what? They burn the tape, bounce back tonight against Jersey, whatever. Earlier in the season, it wasn't like that. It was like stinker after stinker after stinker after stinker. And that wears you down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big right? time. Big time. 
Anyways, we just had a little therapy session here at the end to end this episode off. Well, um, Rob, so, if I'm completely honest with you, yep, I thought the start of this episode was a little rough. But the end, I think we redeemed ourselves. Well, why, why was it rough? Because why was it rough? Because I didn't get your Pierre Engvall reference and you weren't yeah, listening to me? And I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably because I wasn't listening, but yeah. at least I, at least I admit it. Yeah. At least it came clean. Yeah. Yeah. You did come clean and I'll yeah. admit it that <laughs> I, I'm still battling a cold and I'm not with it mentally. So you referenced Pierre Engvall's number 47 and I just went completely over my head <laughs> oh man anyways ryan you've got some homework to do before next week's episode you got to give I'll everybody a letter grade i'll do that i'll have to set yep. aside some time yep yep you get to write a, a formal report card and you also have one other thing that i need you to do i need you to say a special prayer for my Green Bay Packers as they head to San Francisco to take on the juggernaut 49ers in the NFC Championship game. A game in which no one, myself included, is giving the Green Bay Packers a chance to win. You know I have you on this one. I'm all pack for the rest of the way. I got you. I got you on that one. All pack. Rest of the way. I'm not a 49ers guy. No. I think I want to see Jimmy G do well after Brady decided he wanted to stay for a while. And then now it seems like he's not coming back. And the quarterback of the future is now throwing balls for the 49ers. Nope. I don't want to see him win. Nope. No. No, you don't. No, you don't. I need to see Aaron get get another Super Bowl ring under his belt. Yes. That's what I need to see. That next echelon of course. Do I care who wins the AFC title game? Not really. Nope. But I would <laughs> nope. enjoy the Packers getting to us another Super Bowl with Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. That would be excellent. All right. On that note, Ryan, we'll see you next week for mid season report cards. Thanks for downloading, everybody. Have a good one.